All right, guys, welcome back to Jason's Design Shop, where I'm gonna do my first follow-up video, probably on my most popular video, which was the CS1500 review. Uh, great saw, and talked about it, and it drummed up a lot of questions, and inspired a lot of people to buy it, and all kinds of stuff in the comments. I suggest you go read those, um, and a lot of answers to those many questions there, but the number one question has been, I must say, is how to deal with the bar oil. And is it flowing and what's going on and I will admit that's my number one problem so let's get started hey Pearl should we talk about sauce today what do you think yeah okay let's do it all right so the bar and the oil yes it's an issue um, in a minute I'm gonna show you uh, what it looks like out in the field when I try to fix the problem because fixing it here is obviously easier than fixing it when you're out cutting so acknowledge that right off the bat um, but first let's take this apart I've used it in it uh, out in the field and I struggled to get it to have any oil and so it's having the issue right now so I'm going to show you uh, what that looks like to clean it up and try to get the oil to go through here in the shop then we'll go cut out to see what the problems were in the field but uh, first, let me just show you right from the get-go here what the problem is in the design of the chainsaw that causes this problem, okay? All right, here's our CS1500 design issue. We've got the bar going around. This is the bottom of the groove that the chain is sliding in, all right? Goes around the sprocket, the chainsaw here. Well, that go that's going this way right and your oil comes from that little hole in the side of the bar and goes up through a teeny little hole into a pocket I've discovered down in there really hard to see from the top but you can see a dark line right here and here and that the little hole is there and the light flashes through when we cover the light with our finger and then and expose it you can see a uh, light coming through so we have a little hole here so what's happening is the chain is leaving the bar and picking up all that dust and garbage that's coming around here. That dust is going around and coming in right here. And now instead of being outside, the sawdust is in the groove and coming in the bar channel, that thin little channel around the bar. And those particles are hitting in here and mixing with the oil and filling this up and filling this up and filling this up and bar oil is coming out and it gets sticky and it just clogs it up. So pretty soon, you got a block. And that is the issue that you're running into when there's no more oil. That is blocking up with sawdust. It seems to work okay when you cut straight up and down on a cross cut, but it doesn't like milling cuts when I'm cutting boards and stuff. Really have a problem with it. All right, so yeah, I made it even bigger down here. The same, to, to illustrate the same problem. This all fills up, blocks the hole. So you gotta take it all apart, clean this out, and you'll see that I'll do that out in the field. But within minutes, all the dust that's all the way around the bar everywhere comes right back and clogs it again, I think, within seconds, and I'm not getting any more oil. So let's just be clear that that's the design issue that I think we're struggling with. All right, so we take this off. I'm not tightening it. There we go, spin the black middle one off, and then comes out. Look, full of sawdust, right? Because it's a chainsaw. Now, the best way I like to clean it is with the air compressor. Cleans it out real fast. And then, Take it apart here. Change loose, I see. Pull that off. Like I did out in the field, I showed how this was just really dirty and full of dust and sawdust in in the backside before I even pushed through the hole. And the hole being right in there. But it looks like it held up. My last uh, cuts there. Let's see. I don't know. Can't see through there. Could be all clogged up again inside there. That was the major issue before. 
Yep. Right where this hole is, right here where it comes out, it's full of dust. Okay. Chain off here. So, what I like to do is take the uh, air compressor and shoot it down the groove. Ooh. There it went. And it's full of dust all the way down the groove. Okay. And that's Boy, that's better. I think I have to use my, uh, where is it? Boy, you can see that light in there. I can see it. See? Now there's light in there coming through. Full caked up with dust. Sawdust. Ah, I drew that wrong. Just for the sake of accuracy, this hole is dropping the oil in right up here. Okay, I'm sorry, here. Let's clean this up. I was doing this from memory. I think I might have been light, slightly wrong. Okay. The bar is like this. There's the hole. But in there, it's in the back of the dip. Yep. So, it's sending the oil through a little hole in here, right here, there's oil coming out. Okay, if that makes a whole bunch of difference to you. It's coming out here, and the, the the chain is taking it away. But it's filling up and clogging, just like we just saw. You could not see light when we looked in here. We could not see the hole through that hole to the light that was coming through here, from the chamber where the oil gets put in. Okay, we have air compressed all the garbage out of here. All the garbage out of the groove. Whoops, out of the groove. The back of here, both sides, the chain, good to go. Now we're gonna put it back together and see if we can get oil to go out. But first, let's see, make sure oil is pumping here. Then we'll put the bar on and make sure it's coming through the crack. And we'll put the chain on and see how it runs. All right, let's see if we can get oil to come out this, just like we are gonna do in the field. That's not good. Maybe it's actually out of oil. Let's take a look over, where's the oil chain? Ooh, it's down pretty low. Does that mean when it's low, it doesn't come out as well either? Something else we can learn along the way. Won't even pump any oil out. And I'm a third, yeah, third full here. Nothing's coming out of this big hole. There it was. Did you see that? I don't know if I was on video. Let's try that right there. You can see that shiny line, yeah. So it does come out. Okay, now. Bonus clip. When you uh, get this on your bar, you're burning sawdust onto a bar that doesn't have any oil. It's so hot, it's sticking on there, right? It only happens when my bar is super hot. So watch out for that. That's a sign that uh, you don't have bar oil going through the, the chain. All right, this is all clean. We can put this on here. Oh, maybe that's... Okay. Because this tightens the chain forward and backwards, that explains why this is so long. Because it always has to be able to reach the hole as this moves forward and backwards when you tighten the chain, right? So the oil comes out of this slot and can find its way out that hole. 
Ah, well, I just answered that question. Okay, looks like we're not gonna be able to see it here. So we're gonna have to... Let's see if we can get oil to come out. I'm gonna put more oil in the chamber first. Let's just talk about for a second, filling up your chamber. Can you see in there? Um, you may wanna use a funnel, because I have spilled many times. It fills up very quickly. It's small, little hole, and when you get to the top, you're overflowing. So lean it back. Oh yeah, it's pretty empty there. And there it is, I can see it coming up. Boom. Stop, stop. If I leave this flat down on the ground, it will run out. So you want to hold that up. Also, we are going to look at a brand new saw that I just got, same version, that the company sent me when the first one I had burned up. An issue with the cap. So another um, person commented in the comments that the seal is in the back of the cap, just like this one. Although you see this one is my old chainsaw. There's a seal here as well. And I was assuming that this seal was sealing it. But actually you can see the seal back in there. And the new caps were leaking and everyone's complaining about it. So I'm gonna analyze that on the new saw at the end of this video, if you wanna see that. Okay, we are full of oil. Let's see if we can get some oil to come out the chain. All right. All right, let's hold this here and see if we can see it coming out. See that black shininess? It is coming out. It's so funny on my phone. I call it the black is oil ran all the way down to here. All right, so now we know oil is a flowing. All right, you can see all the oil in there now. It's all wet and running and through the groove. So now we're gonna put the chain on. A lot of people seem to want help on how to do that. Hanging it by this way, I'm making sure that the blade sharp end is on the bottom because it's gonna cut this way, right? To have the blade on correctly, and that's the sharp side. I'm gonna put on the sprocket first, then slide it down over the bolt. So then I come down, I'm pulling on the chain. I'm gonna bring it back on there, put it on. Actually, I'm gonna put the uh, chain around the sprocket first, and then drop it over the pin. Second. I gotta loosen this. Spin it until it falls in. And you can tighten it back up a little bit so it's not too floppy and it's holding itself there. Of course, we may have to spin this to get it to uh, be in the right place for the bolt. All right, I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. Make sure it's down. So now it's holding itself pretty good. Then we can get this on there. Push that down, make sure it's good. Spin the middle first. There we go, it's grabbing it. And then we could check the chain is loose there, right? So we're gonna loosen that up a little bit. So you turn counterclockwise on the center to loosen it. They tighten together sometimes. That's pretty tight. All right, pretty good. And we can check the bar oil. Here we go. Oh, we gotta plug it in. That'll be safe. All right, All right plugged in and That's loud without headphones on. Okay, so that was the test. Uh, look at that, we got really loose in there too, so. But we wanna see if there's oil in there. A little bit, not as much as I looks. Oh, there it is, see it's coming out, I saw gooey. It's in the very bottom of the groove there, it is starting to go around, yep, all slimy. So it's working its way around, it's uh, a little slow. That was about as long as it take to cut one nice log there. 15 seconds or less. Hey guys, I'm just in editing. I'm gonna cut into this clip and talk about something that I used to deal with and then I learned how to resolve that I just saw in the clip that I was doing. I came back and that chain was super loose, right? Um, because look how they turned together. 
this center part and the ring, the red ring, which actually is what you use to tighten the chain. So you turn that and it seems really tight. Well, all you've done is tighten the chain. You have not tightened the center black ring. See, that keeps turning, which will lock that red ring from un, uh, from loosening. And then when you're chaining and you, you're cutting and you come off and it's super loose, you're like, why does the chain keep getting loose? It's because you need to turn the center separate from the red. So once you get the red, which is the chain where you want it, too loose, right? Let's see, too loose. And then I can't make it tighter because this is too tight. I gotta back this off, right? Let's get it right where I want it. Want it like that tight, pretty tight. Then I'm gonna turn the center in and lock it, right? And now it can't, it can't loosen. And so I should be able to chain for a long time without the chain getting loose on me. So just wanted to clarify the issue with that. And so you understand why your chain is getting loose. It's because you tighten them both together and then they were easy. It was easy to un, undo itself in the vibrations of chainsawing. Okay, back to the uh, other clip. Thanks. Okay, so that's how you get it going. And that's how much oil should be coming out. I mean, you don't want to go in so fast that you run out. But remember the reservoir is really small so if it's thrown in everywhere for some reason you're getting too much but uh, you do want it to be getting all the way around because it starts at the top all the way around to the bottom so in a couple of minutes you know a couple more cuts it'll be getting all the way around but then the sawdust gets in there and then you got to start watching out all right let's go out in the field and see what it's like to cut a slab and this is really where I get into my issues because I think this saw is made to just be cut upright, right? Nice cross cuts. As soon as you lay that over, and I thought it'd make a big difference that I, I was doing the, the sets cuts this way, but now I'm doing them this way with the jig, see? And so I thought that would help because the oil is on the top up here, but actually it's still on, it's still on the bottom having to get out here. So I don't know pump should be pumping it there no matter the angle of the saw but it doesn't seem to like being laid sideways to do milling cuts um, you notice I've got a milling blade on there it's a straight across it's not a point so if you want to do milling cuts like in this video I'm about to show you you're gonna need a blade that cut that's flathead like that square head and I got about six of these and I hit nails and then I had a guy locally that can resharpen blades and stuff for much cheaper than buying new ones but they don't last as long before you know it they're not cutting very well right nothing like a new blade cool let's get out there in the field and give it a shot okay here we are out in the field backyard actually <laughs> cutting this nice cherry wood log into some slabs I'm in this thing about three feet and we're gonna check it out and see what we got going you can get in here feel it it's it's pretty warm if it gets really hot you'll get a browning in here the bars there if it's really hot you'll get a browning effect on the edge here where it's burning the wood to the the white bar so you know you're really hot then. Yeah, this is pretty warm. And so now I'm gonna check my oil, pull this out, rub my thumb on there. See, oh, this feels really dry. We're gonna find out here. And look at my fingers. Gosh. Absolutely nothing. Dry as can be. So it's not getting oil. So really, I don't wanna just, I could go through and push through this last four feet. Um, in sections and just go slow and get it done and be done. But I wanna do more cuts, right? Probably gonna do three cuts in here, at least two more. And so I gotta solve this oil problem. So what I do is I turn this over and I'm gonna take this all off and leave the bar connected to the whole jig. But of course, if you're not connected to the jig, you don't have to worry about that. And then I can just hook it right back in and tighten it back up. So we're gonna see if we can get oil to squirt out the hole out of the motor, take the bar off. And if that's good, then we wanna put the bar on and the chain probably off and see if it's squirting through the hole in the, the, the bar and coming out into the crack right here, which is on the top side, right in here. All right, 
So let's hope we can get it to come out and not have to do that. All right, before I take it completely off, you can see that oil is getting through because we have oil and sawdust. But boy, not much. Here's a little bit, see? I should be able to have that oil on my finger when I chuck the chain right there. Coming out onto the chain right in here, right on the top, top of the chainsaw. There's a the lever. All right, so let's loosen this up. It's hard to do this with a camera in my hand. Okay, this is cooled down now. Um, actually, I, it. <sighs> I really would love to clean this really well and blow it before I take it off, but we're just gonna have to be careful. All right, took it off. See how dust gets everywhere. And it doesn't take much of these little particles, I think, to get in the mix and then get clogged up when it's trying to go through that little hole there, right there. And you see the ring that's supposed to keep out all the dust? Well, look at all the dust that's still in there. Particles all over in there. I don't know why they make it come away up here when it should just be a little circle. So oil needs to be going through that hole and into the slot down there and onto the chain bar. And this is totally dry. So let's see if we're even getting any oil out of the motor. Okay, let's come out here and see if oil oozes out of that. Okay, here we go. On it. There she is. That's a good sign. No problem with the pumping of the oil. So, why isn't it coming through the bar? Maybe because the bar is a little clogged. So let's look at that next. All right, so here's where the oil's going through. I'm gonna clean that off. And it should be coming out the groove there. Now let's see with the camera if I can zoom into there. See right in the middle of the screen is the hole. And there's, I suppose, light coming through the hole. A lot of wood chips in there. This is where it meets the chain and all the wood. And so, hmm, there's the hole. Right there's the hole dark in there so that, that was not the hole there can't see and it's just too dark <sighs> right I'm gonna try to clean it out with so I got this nice thin screwdriver and go in there and try to clean that out let's see oh yeah there is garbage blocking the hole there we go look at that there it is. That was in there. Well, that can't be helpful. And now it's down to a little, a little pinhole there. Aha, we're in there. Wire brush it out. These wire brushes are pretty crappy here. I have to have my stand. I didn't bring it with me, sorry. So clean out that hole real good. And now you can see, okay, watch. There's light. See the light flashing there? So that was totally clogged. We didn't get that at all. Nice big hole there now. I still think there's some garbage around it, but hopefully that'll get the oil flowing again. So let's give it a try. Okay, we're back together, all on there. Let's give it a shot. See if we can pump some oil onto there. Boy, that sucker spins. So it was coming out for the I think I feel something just starting. to feel it doesn't take much comes out the top and comes around that's why I'm checking on the bottom that's where hopefully I get the most of it yep all right 
Let's see, run this out and see if it gets hot or not. All right, so you can see that clogs up really fast, probably really easily with just a little bit of dirt, that hole coming out into the channel, the chain ratchet. So keep checking that. That's where the clogs are probably gonna be. That's why your chain isn't getting oil. Um, I'll clean it out really good when I get home. Finish this cut and let's see if it's getting hot or if it's, uh, that's my biggest uh, check. If it's getting hot, there's no oil. So slow down, I'm gonna burn it up. All right, give it a try. Okay, let's check it out. I've gone for it about six, seven, eight inches. It's pretty warm. Wow, it's hot. That's sad. Probably clogged up again. I can pull this chain out. Feel in there. <coughs> Nothing. Dry as a bone. Uh, see, so this is what you deal with with this cheap type of saw. So either take it out and do it again, or I'm I gotta be done here. This is taking far too long. So I'm gonna finish this cut in little sections, keep cooling it down and be done and come back another day with a clean saw. It's just so much easier to clean out with the air compressor, you know, pointy nozzle and test it in the shop, see what's going on. It's too much dust out here to try to deal with it. All right, back to the shop. Oh, okay, so maybe you wanted to see what this looked like when I cut it open. You know, we call it the big reveal. So, my little metal thing to keep me on my flat on my first cut and then oh I didn't finish look at that. oh beautiful huh hey got a really smooth cut with that new sharpened blade I'm impressed by that oh a little step there wow I almost <laughs> that's how close I was to getting all the way through a little teeny piece 18 inch blade on that thing hey that's beautiful look at that i love these knots right in the middle all the way up to there all right there's the one i originally cut that's the rounded bottom of it and here's the first actual slab look at that center cool the cool knots up here too i don't know what that is grease ew Something gross in there. Black sap. This is rotten. Come out of there. Can fill it with something cool. Ooh, look at this. That's some interesting sap. All right. This video is turning into a slab video, but I thought you'd be interested in seeing what it was gonna look like when I cut it. It's gonna be fun. It's about an inch and a half thick. Great. All right, a couple slabs of that. I'll be pretty happy. All right, out of here. Back to the shop. All right, so we've learned that uh, got to use bar oil. Lots of that. Keep an eye on it. If it gets too hot, you know you got a problem. You got to slow down. So you'll burn it up. A little, a little teeny motor like that, and plastic parts inside. It is a cheap saw. Let's be clear about that. Um, but it's a workhorse and I love it. It does great But you got to be careful. It'll burn it up um, Great ways to clean it right air compressor and uh, Wire brush works pretty well too You get down in that groove you could get something a toothbrush with long bristles or something might work really good for when you're out Suddenly have this problem But I found even though I fix it in the field like in the video um, that we just did it just cakes up again because it's literally inside the bar all the way around and the dust and so as soon as you clear it out it just pushes more into that little pocket that we talked about and just clogs it up again so you really gotta take the whole thing out blow it all out really clean it and then start again <laughs> but uh, okay so hopefully that issue is resolved um, you just gotta deal with it it's part of the problem of having this saw now let's check out the new saw told you I would talk about the uh, oil cap that has been a problem in so many. People are asking me, did they solve that? The ship <laughs> See the problem there? Look at that. Huge gap. So I thought this had to press down on that seal. And when I used it, it was leaking. 
So I took this off and took my very first chainsaw that died and put it on the one you were just looking at. And that solved the problem. So is this one going to be junk? It shouldn't be because see, they're telling me, look, hey, the seal's up in there. So if you were having that problem of it leaking, maybe we're just not turning it tight enough. Give it that extra little uh and get it tight. Yep, so they still have this uh, seal that I said in many of my comments, if you go back and read, that was a problem. But apparently it shouldn't be a problem. So I don't know. I don't, I'm not using this one right now. It's brand new, so I'm not going to put any oil in it or anything. Do you have any oil in it? No, it doesn't come preloaded. All right. So that's the story on the cap. It should be working for you. All right, guys, I hope that helps uh, clarify a lot of the questions in the last video and also gives it a little bit more of a critique. I was just all hands down for the saw in the last video. This one, little showing the negative, showing some problems with it. Um, that and also seems to be ringing true with other people struggling to get that bar oil to go around the chain and um, I love your comments. Thanks for all that you've said and um, That it helped you uh, make a decision on to buy or not buy the saw and things like that. That makes me feel great So that's it for this video. Check out the next one coming soon um, Gonna try to turn this cherry log slab into a table a little end table but I'm thinking of filling the crack right now with uh, epoxy maybe red i don't know check it out and uh thanks friends for watching see you in the next time later